Due to the extraordinary advances in the field of solar energy during the past 100 years, solar panels are everywhere. Year after year, we're seeing the demand for solar energy in America rocket and the benefits this brings to both the nation's economy and the environment are staggering. Yet, after years of double-digit growth, home solar installations in the United States fell for the first time in 2017. In this video, we're looking at the history of domestic solar power, where the market currently is and, as importantly, where it's likely to go in the years to come. Mankind has a long history of using the sun's energy. Even the ancient Greeks, Romans and Chinese used glasses and mirrors to concentrate sunlight and light fires. In the 1800s, scientists began experimenting with a photovoltaic effect, which uses the sun's energy to create electricity and, for many years, the experiments continued, but regrettably never produced a usable amount of electricity. Finally, in 1954, scientists at Bell Labs built the first solar cell in silicon that had enough juice to power electronics. Suddenly, solar energy use had a place outside the lab and its potential grew exponentially. After Bell Labs pioneered the silicon solar cell, it focused on making solar cells more efficient. And in that regard, they made significant improvement, taking it from 4% efficiency in 1954 to 14% by 1960. This, of course, nicely coincided with the space race. NASA seeing the potential for solar energy and asking Bell Labs to create a solar panel for one of their satellites. In 1958, NASA launched Vanguard 1 into orbit and the first satellite and its first product to rely on solar energy. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, the biggest customers of solar energy, therefore, were the space programs. Many attempts were made to commercialise the solar energy systems, but the high production costs made it extremely difficult. Finally, in the 1970s, Dr. Elliot Berman and the Exxon Corporation designed a solar cell that cost significantly less to manufacture. And thus it was in this decade that the industrial use of solar panels really began to build momentum. The designs of Dr. Berman and similar products were able to reduce the cost of solar panels from $100 per watt to less than $20 a watt by using cheaper materials. And, as had been the case a decade earlier, the timing was particularly fortuitous, as a new design coincided with the energy crisis of the 1970s. The surging price of oil led many people to begin looking for alternative forms of energy. And this is where solar energy first saw major public interest. Solar panels started being used on lighthouses, offshore rigs, railroad crossings and in all manner of remote locations. But it didn't stop there, because in 1973 the University of Delaware built Solar One, one of the first solar-powered homes in the country, and people finally began to see domestic solar energy as a viable prospect. During the 1980s, home solar installations slowed down, as traditional energy again dropped in price. In 1982, the Kyocera Corporation developed a new casting method to mass-produce solar cells. This method is still the industry standard, and it once again significantly cut manufacturing costs. Finally, in the 1990s, federal governments began to get involved in the research and development of solar energy. They even developed grants and tax incentives for people to use solar energy systems in their homes. Since then, manufacturing costs have continued to decrease, while the benefits of new technology have seen efficiencies increase, and home installations have increased significantly. In fact, we're now at the point today when home solar energy systems are a beneficial addition to nearly every new home. And solar energy now competes financially with traditional forms of energy and offers the additional benefit of energy independence and a lower environmental impact. A cumulative 10.6 gigawatts of solar voltaics were installed in the US in 2017, according to GTM Research and the Solar Energy Industries Association. That's down from the 15 gigawatts in the record-breaking 2016 year, but still represents a 40% growth over the installations in 2015. This is the first time that GTM Research has reported a year-over-year -year fall in residential installations since the report was first published in 2010. This was felt across the top four state markets, California, New York, Maryland and New Jersey, although GTM Research does note that the residential market continues to diversify, with market shares of the states outside the top 10 increasing from 16% to 21%. Of the top 10 residential solar markets in 2016, which collectively accounted for 85% of installed residential capacity that year, only two saw annual growth in 2017. 
California and the major northeastern markets experienced annual contractions, whilst Arizona and Utah both experienced growth last year, but driven by policy-related factors. Utah saw a rush of applications ahead of the cutoff date for the Rocky Mountain Power's more generous net metering program, which ended in November. Whilst Arizona saw a similar installation increase last year, as customers sought to take advantage of retail rate net metering credits in Arizona public service territories before new, less favourable rates took effect. What's behind the nationwide slowdown though? Market analysts suspect there are three main causes. Firstly, they suggest that the solar panel markets in the major states are becoming saturated. In general, areas with greater solar penetration are experiencing heightened customer acquisition issues as the pool of attractive earlier adopters grows increasingly thin. Secondly, structural changes in the market are having an effect, with net metering reform and the loss of state incentives also playing a role. And finally, they suggest business model changes amongst the solar installation firms are playing a significant factor. SolarCity, Vivint and Sunrun have had difficulty scaling up their new loan and customer-owned solar products. SolarCity, once the nation's leading residential solar installer, has had a particularly difficult time following its acquisition by Tesla. Sunrun likely surpassed SolarCity as the leading residential solar installation across all deal types, including leases, PPA loans and cash sales, in the third quarter of 2017. Whilst at the same time, Solar City saw significant declines across major markets over the last year. In Massachusetts, for example, the company's installation volumes dropped by 75%, but analysts stress that the slowdown across the US can't be blamed entirely on Tesla's solar business. Customer acquisition costs are a persistent issue for those in the residential solar sector. While system components and even labour costs are declining, the cost of acquiring new customers significantly rises. Added to this issue, and this particularly affects the US, is the issue of permitting. Countries like Australia have streamlined the rooftop solar permitting process, which lowers overall system costs. It follows logically that a lower cost system is easy to sell. This also reduces customer acquisition costs and has a compounding positive effect. As the industry looks for new ways to cut costs, Dan Wheaton, Vice President of Communications at the Solar Energy Institute, points out that residential solar is being coupled with other technologies to add more value. Dan was focusing particularly on the impact that marrying solar power with domestic battery storage can have. And if you're interested in finding this, a link to a video we've covered on this channel should be popping up now. Unlike residential solar, the year-on-year -year downturn for utility-scale segments last year was largely expected, and that was a cause, frankly, due to a flood of installations that we saw in 2016, ahead of the anticipated expiration of the 30% federal tax incentive. However, last year's slowdown was also triggered by certain policy shifts. Uncertainty surrounding the Section 201 tariffs on solar cells and modules caused many utility-scale products to be shelved last year. The fourth quarter of 2017 saw price increases in most PV market segments, but especially in the utility scale solar due to the shortage of tier 1 module supply and reactions to trade competitions, especially the threat and imposition of tariffs on Chinese imports. In addition, the cancellation and delays of solar power projects deployed under the Public Utility Regulatory Policies Act, or PERPA, resulted in many utility scale projects spilling over into 2018. These market shifts were offset in particular by a strong showing in the non-residential solar market last year, which grew 28% year-on-year, notching up its fourth straight year of annual growth. This year in particular saw an explosion in the community solar market led by Minnesota and Massachusetts, which collectively accounted for more than 80% of community solar sold last year. When all three segments are combined, the volume of the US solar market fell 30% last year. However, it's still positive news since it was 41% larger than it was just a few years ago in 2015. This indicates that the boom in 2016 was the outlier in the overall trend, not the volume last year. But market segments only tell part of the story of an industry that struggled last year with policy changes, both at the federal in addition to the state level. US President Donald Trump's 30% tariffs on imported PV cells and modules led to a market slowdown, particularly in the utility scale segment, as well as increased prices and shortages of modules in the second half of the year. The effects of other major federal policy changes last year, tax reforms in particular, have yet to be fully understood. 
Moving forward, the drivers for utility scale market deployments are beginning to shift as costs fall even further. Whilst the trade tariffs drove module prices up 20% the second half of the year to 48 cents per watt, prices for both non-residential and utility scale systems still fell significantly year on year due to cost reductions in other categories. Whilst the worst case of federal policy impacts was largely averted last year, the report expects significantly flat installation volumes in 2018, with another 10.6 gigawatts being installed. GTM Research and the Solar Energy Installers Association further expect the market to begin to rise again slowly in 2019 to reach over 15 gigawatts annually by 2023. Solar power has come such a long way in such a short period of time. Despite the imposition of tariffs, the genie is out the bottle and there's very little that any one politician can do about it. Across the globe, solar power is undercutting gas, coal and nuclear costs and when combined with storage offers significant savings to electricity consumers. Initially thought of as a fad, US consumers however embraced solar power and it's clear that electricity generated from the sun has an increasingly bright future across the country.